Hey you, today we're going to be talking about Dragon Ball Super Volume Number 4 from Manga Entertainment. And I've got to admit, this was one that I was generally really looking forward to actually seeing. Um, but then again, it left me high and dry, very much on near the kind of end. And I was like, oh... <laughs> Um, but let's just jump straight into it and have a look and before we carry on remember if you want to see more of these videos Or you want to see more videos in general click the bell button and let it ring and then you will be notified every single time a video is uploaded It's a good thing because it helps the channel grow as well as liking it. So remember to hit the like Button as well. Yeah, and subscribe general information we start off exactly at the end and that is near the end of the tournament of destroyers where goku is against hit and they start kind of having a a chin wag they want to fight each other the fullest but this isn't a thing this doesn't happen uh, because beerus and champa won't allow it because they can't be bothered or one doesn't want it the other one does so they start arguing all the time after this we meet a new character zeno who is the uh, almighty like emperor god king of everything in the world and everybody is extremely scared of him because he can do you know what he can erase universes just like that which is very scary and everybody is pretty much scared of him um because you don't know what he's gonna do but he's a good guy but has a a, a mind of a child apparently which we'll see much later on in the in the sagas um, but yeah, he is a dangerous boy, but he is also Goku's new friend. So we also then have the, as I say, wind down. This is when Goten and Trunks go to a mysterious planet because uh, in the back of Monarch's uh, like vehicle. So which then means that they go off and have an adventure, which then leads into Miss Magic Water or Mystic Water, which clones Vegeta later on and almost kills him, which then leads into a fight between Goku and clone Vegeta. And yeah. Then we start off with the Goku Black Saga, which was possibly one of my favorite ones. Um, so it, there's a lot on this Blu-ray automatically. Um, as you can tell, the sun likes it too. There isn't a lot. There's only one interview with Sean Schemmel, who talks about his journey through Dragon Ball Super, as well as some of Z. And then obviously we get Techless opening and closing. Um, my favorite one is the, the one with the, where it's going across the banner with all the characters. The music's also quite cool as well. I'm um, also hearing it in English. It's not bad. I just like the animation. Let's talk about the overview. This volume kind of does the same and doesn't at the same time as its previous ones where you get the last episode of the saga on this disc and it carries on um, but this one doesn't kind of do the same. At the very end it stops at the very beginning of Goku Black. Uh, that saga which I was kind of like oh okay I kind of want to watch more of this. The story progresses from Goku losing to Hit. Um, obviously they can't fight to the fullest, so Goku jumps out of the ring and says, yeah, I forfeit, oh look, I've just fallen out of the ring, which then causes Beerus to go crazy, like, um, and then Champa to be like, yeah, yeah, that's really cool. And then obviously Hit taking one for the team, where he flies out when Monoka punches him very slightly, and he goes flying out of the ring. Um, and yeah, that, that's pretty much it for that particular round. Then obviously we have the after party where Beerus dresses up as Monarcha and then it goes into where Goten and Trunks go off to a different planet and then we come into the Goku Black Saga and to be honest as I said before I really wish the Goku Black Saga carried on. So let's talk about the animation and oh boy the animation was not the best in this one. Normally you'd see that everything would be fine, everything would flow and be something different but there were so many mistakes in this. Like, it felt like they didn't care about just the drawing of the characters. Sometimes you would have Goku, like, just looking and his eyes would be completely different. Like, his pupils would be here, one would be there, and it didn't fit very well. Um, there's also one where Bulma is trying to explain something, and she has, like, a giant head, her body's too small, um, and then all the other characters feel like they've been shrunk down. I didn't like some of the animation in this. Some of it was drawn really well. And you could tell, like, some scenes were drawn by someone else. Now, I know that this wasn't drawn by one person. This was drawn by multiple different people, and they all have their different art styles. But you kind of think that with the money that was being poured into it, or the money that this was producing, that they'd sit down and go, do you know what? 
we're going to carry on. We're going to make every single episode the same. And I think it's not until much later on when you see the Tournament of Power, that's when it really kicks in. And I was very kind of like, oh, uh, I think there's also like some of the other characters like Vegeta just looks really off-putting at times um, and it, it just wasn't drawn with care. This also kind of carried on into the Goku Black Saga. Some of it was just very kind of meh and it wasn't kind of eh. But you could tell that as soon as like some of the most intense scenes later on were drawn perfectly and I just don't know why they didn't keep that animator on all the time. I don't know if that animator had to go off and do other projects, but you think that with such a big project like this, you'd be like, we'll pay you whatever you want, just keep drawing. Some of it did flow, some of it felt very fluid that I was like, okay, I can get behind this. But then most of the time, I, I just kind of like, when I was relaxing watching this, I was kind of pulled out by the animation. I was like, oh, that's kind of like not upset me, but it's kind of made me go, oh, I, I want this scene to end. Um, and I just literally would either want to skip or just be like, oh, I'm not kind of into this. I do, as I said before, I do feel like Toei could have done a lot more. They could have said, look, we know how much this brings in all the time. This is what we're going to do. We're going to pay the money for it so it's consistent and not just up and down because sometimes when the animation is so bad because it's either drawn a week before and it's rushed, it doesn't give a kind of niceness to your product and it kind of feels like a, uh, you just pretty much want the money in for this one. Um, so I kind of wish Toye would actually have said, yep, here's all the money, like, you know, just, just produce one saga. Um, and I do think, as I've probably said this in, in the past video, I would have loved it if Toye would have taken a while to do this. So when you had like the uh, resurrection of F or when you had the, uh, the God saga, like the uh, Beerus, but at that time, other people were working on like trunks as well as like some of the the, to the tournament of destroyers, and actually took its time rather than just kind of rushing this to get out for a deadline. Let's talk about the writing. The writing to me was very interesting because I've seen this both in English and Japanese. I watched it all the way through in Japanese, but now I'm starting to watch it all in English. And to me, it feels like Dragon Ball Z still, as in. Like, Goku is still the hero. You know that in the Japanese one, he becomes a bit of a dick. He always wants to fight. He always wants that power boost. He always wants to fight people that are stronger than him. But when it comes into this part here in English, it feels like he's still the hero of the story that I've known since I started watching this, how everything has never really changed. And I kind of like that. You do also see that Goku is a massive child in this. Like you can see the elements come down in previous ones where he's been dead serious, dead focused. In this particular volume, he seems to be a bit of a kid. Like, he doesn't understand some things, but you kind of think that he would have learned all the way through. There were a lot more jokes in this, and it did feel a very funny anime at times, um, especially when Goku's like, chi and his energy is completely out of whack from when he's done the Kaioken Blue or, you know, the Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken, where he's trying to, like, go to different places. He's trying to fly, but it stops working so when he goes like oh i'm gonna go to king kai and he teleports into bulma's bedroom and you know he just makes that joke of like oh yeah your boobs are saggy and stuff like that you know i wouldn't have expected it in like in z but this was just very funny to the point where you know it was just out of character you know even when he went to king kai and he's like how you train me he's like no goku i'm not gonna train you and it's like okay but just the way that goku was he was very innocent but now it's more kind of like oh you're a little bit funny it's just those funny elements and the funny moments watching this from a point of view where if i hadn't seen it there are elements that made me want to keep watching when goku and clone vegeta are fighting i wanted to know what happened when it came to the goku black arc i wanted to know what happened like I think because I'd never heard it in English, and this is one thing we'll be touching about in characters, is I'd never heard Sean talk um, with Goku Black. I'd always heard the really gruff voice, um, but I was so kind of, I really wanted to know. And when it came up to Goku Black, I wanted to keep watching, you know, where Goku is, or where Goku Black is fighting Trunks and then suddenly goes into the future. After Trunks later, I had to keep watching because I was so focused on this. I just, I couldn't stop watching. And I really liked that in the writing. It was like the anticipation of like, I know what's gonna come, but I wanna see what it's like in English. I wanna see if they've captured the tone of the Japanese and put it into this. I was so excited and it made me want to keep watching over and over again. I did find some of the 
arcs in between the stories a little bit boring at times it was like okay i know you've got to cool down the rate of the of the action but i want to make sure that i i'm invested in the next one and i didn't realize that how many episodes there were between um the end of the tournament to goku black i was like oh okay that's fine um but i didn't realize how many i only thought there was one or two um but you know it did get a little bit boring at times but it kind of picked up and that's what I liked. Let's talk about the characters. Now, I'm not going to go in all of the other characters because we've pretty much covered them all. But the one main character that I really wanted to focus on was Goku Black. I keep saying his name all the time. As I mentioned before, I was very kind of skeptical on how the voice was. When I heard it in Xenoverse 2, it was dead gruff and like, I'm going to destroy you. I have the power of the gods. And then comparing it to where you watched in Japanese to where that was, I was like, oh, okay. This is a bit weird, but I was I, I wanted to hone back until I actually saw this on Blu-ray rather than watching the American version. I think they're, they're probably a lot further on. But when I heard him and his kind of the dark tone in his voice, I was like, perfect. This is how I definitely see it. I don't see it as anything bad. And it felt like Goku. It sounded like Goku, but I felt that it wasn't. So when Sean has done this voice, it was perfect for me. It's how I saw Goku Black how I wanted it, and I was just ex really excited to, I wanted to hear him talk all the time, um, but for what we got, it was just absolutely perfect. And I know obviously later on when he goes uh, Super Saiyan Rose, that's gonna be a whole different bundle of fish, but I kind of really wish they kept the same because when you hear the Japanese one compared to the American one, you kind of want it to stay the same. What made this interesting for me? As I said before, I didn't realize that there was a huge, kind of jump from the uh, from the uh, Tournament of Destroyers to Goku Black. I generally thought there was only one or two episodes. So it went, finish, here are the two episodes, boom. I didn't realize how many there were to kind of separate it. I generally like the fact that there were consequences for Goku using the Kaioken and Super Saiyan Blue. Um, like, it just wasn't shrugged off. It wasn't like, oh, yeah, he's just used it. He's like, oh, I'm going to feel this. And then you saw him in the hospital or you saw him at home not doing anything. Um, I generally really like the fact that it had consequences for now where he couldn't fly properly. If he used his tra instant transmission, he couldn't, like, go to the place that he wanted. When they talked about, like, the, uh, the way his energy was, if he didn't turn around and, and rest, then obviously he would lose the ability to fight. And I like the fact that it kind of scared Goku in this one. He was like, yeah, I'll take it easy. I'll do what I can. I won't use my energy or my powers, but I know that I want to. And it was that kind of balance that he had. I also did like the kind of references back to uh, Dragon Ball Z. And even with Dragon Ball, where Goku was like, oh, you know, we've got to get all this cabbage and all this like lettuce out and all these like vegetables. But then he tricked Piccolo and he's like, yeah, this is exactly what Krillin and I used to do back in the day of training. These little things were, were fine. And even when you saw the kind of flashback to where it was like the history of Trunks, again, that wasn't very animated very well. But I like the kind of references saying like, you know, I've not forgotten about this. This is what it's all about. And I generally thought, oh, okay. like, uh. But this made it interesting for me to continue on watching rather than just be like, meh, and then kind of leave it. So my final thoughts. I was generally impressed with this. Um, the animation could have been worked on a lot more. Um, I would love it if, like, if they do another version of all these box sets that they retake, uh, they take their time with the animation, or they implement the new style of animation and go all the way through. I think that would be very kind of interesting to see if they would do that. I did question the animation at times. I didn't like certain things, um, especially either with like the way Bulma was drawn at times where it felt very out of place. And then compared to where, like, even with the history of Trunks, that felt very, oh, I'm not really kind of into that one. Um, even when you saw Goku with the way that he was drawn, um, it felt rushed at times. And this is where I was like, man, I also did like the fact that he became a grandpa where he actually looked after Pan for a while. And, it, and you know, you even seeing Piccolo where he was just like, you know, he was a babysitter, but he was more invested. And he was like, yeah, I've got to go do my own thing. And then later on, just come back and just go like, oh, by the way, she likes this. She likes this. Make sure you do this. I generally felt that there was more of a connection to these characters rather than just here we go, here we're going to fight all the time, etc, etc. I'm very much looking forward to the next arc of the, the volume, volume 5, because this will be mainly uh, Goku Black orientated. In a way, this volume number 4, they kind of teased you a lot and went, hey, 
You're going to love this saga, but we're going to cut it off at the very most key point and you're going to have to get the next one. So to me, that was interesting. I absolutely really liked it and I can't wait for it. So I do highly recommend it. If you can get past some of the animation and just go for the storytelling, then this is definitely worth collecting. If you're collecting them all like myself, then definitely keep it because they look absolutely awesome. Um, and it's a really nice thing to kind of watch. And if you want to do like a whole chain marathon from Dragon Ball to Dragon Ball Z to Dragon Ball Super, then you'll definitely need this. Um, and yeah, I just think, oh, it's just, it's good anime. It could be done better slightly to the animation, but obviously we'll see that when it comes into Goku Black and then obviously the Tournament of Power. So Rangers, I'm going to leave it there. What did you think about this um, anime? Did you like it? Did you not? What did you think about the animation? Let me know down below in the comments. If you've liked this video, like, favorite, comment, and consider subscribing. Check out all the other videos on the channel. If you want to help out the channel on Patreon, link is in the description down below. And as always, Rangers, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a bit.